come back in with this brown ochre again blend that I want to use a bit of the dark sepia as well. Come around the side with this dark sepia. Come down the side of this leg. Up into this bottom of this hoof. I'm just using this dark sepia to just shape this, the bottom of this hoof a little bit. going to blend this a little bit with the burnt sienna I just want to blend it but I also just want to intensify that lovely uh, burnt sort of rusty brown color and then I'm just using a walnut brown to add a little bit of the fur texture back on where I've blended. And you may not need to do this. Yours may already be um, dark enough and intense enough. You just have to sort of take a look at your work and, you know, make a decision. And, um, you know, we're all sort of making decisions as we go along, really, as to when it's dark enough, when it's blended enough, whether there's enough contrast there. And, you know, just because I'm doing this with mine, you don't necessarily have to do it with yours. You may think that yours is uh, fine. The thing is, we all put pencil down at, with different pressures and, you know, sort of differently. So some of us may have reached where we want to go in terms of values uh, faster than others. But I do tend to keep going with it until I can't see any more tooth, any more grain. I like to have that, that grain filled in. As much as possible. Sometimes the grain's useful. Sometimes it really works. And I want to... Uh, this is a cold grey three. Uh, yeah, sometimes the, the grain's really useful and I want to use it for, to my advantage, but then other times I do want to make sure it's uh, it's filled in or I can hardly see it. And you'll always sort of see it a bit when you uh, zoom in. I mean, sometimes I'll put photographs on Instagram and I, I've really zoomed into them and you can see, you can still see a bit of grain there. But when you just look at it normally with your own eye, you know, at its normal size, you can't see the grain. So um, just because you're perhaps seeing it zoomed in on a, a camera uh, doesn't mean to say that you, you're going to actually see it when you're looking at it with your, um, with the naked eye. I'm going to take this uh, brown ochre 50% and I'm just going to put a little bit on the bottom of this hoof and also a little bit on the bottom of this hoof, just a touch. Just 
just blend that. And I'm also going to go in with a little bit of the, the Burnt Ochre 10%. Just put a bit of that peachiness in there, not much, just a little bit. Just sort of blend out little bits with that, um, the Burnt Ochre. And it'll just add, it'll blend and it'll add a bit of peachiness at the same time. And then I'm just going to go over the the hooves with a little bit of the dark sepia, just here and there. Obviously, it's all higgledy piggledy because it's in the snow. We've we've got um, snow there. I'm just going to draw it as I see it. I'm not going to try and even it out or anything. Make it a little bit darker. And then I'm just going to blend that last little bit with the buff titanium again. Just that little bit of grain down the bottom. There's just a tiny little bit of grey left. Going to come into this uh, back with quite a cold base layer and I'm just going to go in with the cold grey three because it's such a small area and we know that it's going to be really sort of dark so I'm going into that with a cold grey three and then I'm going to go in with a Payne's grey and get some dark down here now I am going to leave a tiny little bit between the two sides of the leg just so that I can get a little bit of contrast and just so that I can put a bit of definition in there I'm going to just flick up because we've obviously got a bit of fur under there so I'm just going to flick that up under there and then just fill that in and nothing special about that. I just want a nice even coverage in there. Coming down, nice neat line down the side of that leg. And I'm just going to blend that a little bit and just desaturate that, knock that back a little bit with the cold grey too. And again, just flick up into this area and also just put a little bit of this cold grey too because I don't want a white um, gap there. I just want that little bit of definition. There is a bit of definition on the reference photograph. You can see it on the reference photograph. It's just going to give me that little tiny bit of a distinction. And I'm just going to go over the two areas and bring it together and just diffuse that a little bit. And I've just got that there. I'm going to come down this leg with the warm grey one again so I'm coming just getting a nice even coverage and it's coming straight down for this because I just want a nice even coverage without any pencil strokes any definition in there this is this is really quite sort of uh, not blurred, but quite sort of diffused and a little bit fuzzy at the back. I've come down to this hoof again and then we'll deal with the hoof afterwards. So get the the layer in there, the under layer. And then I'm also going to come around this side and come down here. I'm going to come down this leg with a nugget. We've obviously got quite a lot of 
sort of grey that's going to go into this leg. But I want to get some brown in here and I want something that's quite neutral. And the nugget is quite a nice colour to build into the greys down here. I'm just going to make it a little bit lighter coming down there. There is still a little bit of brown in there, but I'm just making sure that that's quite light coming down there. I mean, I'm not pressing on hard anywhere, but I just want to make sure that this is lighter because we've got that light little edge. I'm just going to do the one leg at a time with this nugget. In fact, I'll probably just work on one leg at a time now. And bring this down. Again, a nice even underlayer. And I come down to this hoof and just again leave it a little bit lighter going around the back of that hoof. I want to come in with a warm grey so I'm going to come in with a warm grey five. Bring this warm grey down over the top of this nugget and the warm grey and the nugget like you say it tones really quite nicely to make a nice sort of uh, grey brown colour. I'm going to leave A little, a little bit round here. In fact, if I go in with a, let me go in with, I'm going to go in with a silver grey from the luminance and hopefully you can see where I'm talking about that little bit there. I don't know if you can see that. Probably not. Go back, I'm going to go over the top of it with a buff titanium. It's a little bit down there anyway, whether you can see it or not. You can see it on the reference photograph. There's just a tiny uh, light a little bit. So I'm just leaving that little uh, bit down there, just coming down the side of it. This comes dark around the back of this. back of this leg comes down here. So I'm just looking where the darker areas are and putting those in with this with this warm grey, sort of plotting them in. And then there's quite a big sort of dark area here. So I'll bring that round. And it starts to come pretty much over the leg, doesn't it? And down to pretty much all of the top of this hoof. I'll plot these hooves in again. There we go, just plotted that in and then that's going to make sense of this down the back. 
This is the hoof behind all the way uh, down here. There we go, that's the one behind. I'm going to come in with the French grey from the Luminance range and I'm going to bring the French grey down the side of this leg down here. It just It's just going to work nicely with the nugget and the warm grey. And if you didn't have the French grey, you could use uh, the, the warm grey too. Not exactly the same, but it would still give you a, a nice colour to mix with the nugget and the, uh, the warm grey that we're using. And this luminance, this warm grey, it's actually uh, filling in the uh, the grain for me, the tooth of the paper, just a little bit faster than the polychromus would because it's just rich and thick and opaque. And it's also blending the colours that I've already put down a little bit. I do find that I can sort of work faster and get a portrait done faster when I do mix these brands of pencils together uh, because they do work really well with each other and you know each of them's got their own part to play in the in the portrait come back with this nugget now and just tint that French grey that I've just put down and the warm grey that I've put down. Just tint that with a, a bit of this nugget brown. So what I want to do from here is I'm going to go in with the, the warm grey, the warm grey 6, and now start to put a little bit of shape and fur texture into this leg. So I'm just coming down with these directional strokes and just starting to shape them around the back of this leg. Coming down the front of this leg. And just blend this shadow across. It comes across this leg, so it comes across the front. comes over the top of this hoof. So 
darken that down a little bit more. come into this side of the leg with a bit of Van Dyke Brown as well just to intensify that brown that we've put in it is still very very grey I don't want it to get too bright I just want to mix a little bit of this in Going to come into this bit down here again with the warm grey one and then into the brown ochre 10%. And bring a little bit of this nugget back over top of this hoof. I'm going to come down this side with a bit of the walnut brown. Um, down the front of this leg. Um, I think you can see that little bit that I put in earlier. Um, I think that's easier to see now. That light a bit. Bring this down. And I'm going to use a bit of the dark sepia down this front as well. Coming in with some of this to really darken this down and create some nice values 
and some really good contrast between the, the lighter parts and the darker parts. And then I want to come in and I want to blend this again. So I'm going to blend it with a French grey 30%. It's just got that nice brown and grey tint to it. And I'm just using little circular strokes because I can't see any or very little fur definition here now. It's quite fuzzy. It's sort of, you know, in the, the these legs are in the background of it, really. I don't want to put a lot of detail in the legs because I don't want it to take away from the head and everything that's going on up here. So I just want them to be nice and blended, have um the the right value so that they do look 3d and they don't look flat but i don't want to have a lot of detail coming through in this area I'm just going to take my razor and I'm just going to pull a little highlight out there, just on the edge there, just on that little bit. I'm going to come back in, now that I've blended it a bit, I'm going to come back in with the dark sepia on this side.
and darken down this uh, shadow part that we had on this side of his leg. I'm going to go into the cold grey two here and I'm going to bring a bit of the cold grey two just where I uh, took that highlight out a second ago. I'm just going over there, come into this bit here with the cold grey two, that lighter bit we put in earlier up there. And just blend this out as well. Just to warm this uh, dark sepia up. I'm just going to use a little bit of walnut brown and I'm just going to go over the top of it with a bit of a glaze to just warm up that dark sepia that I put down. Let's add a bit more of a, a sort of warmer brown colour to it. Bring a little bit of the Caput Morton Violet into here as well, actually. Just into this, the dark bit, just the really dark bit. I'm going to bring a little bit of that Caput Morton Violet in. Let's go back over it because I don't want it to look red. I do want it to look brown. But I want this brown to just go a bit sort of darker and more intense. So by putting the Caput Morton Violet under the, the dark sepia, that's just made that go a bit darker, a bit more intense. And then I can just blend out the side again with the walnut brown. And then one last thing, I'm just going to make sure that I make these bits of hooves that are showing as dark as they need to be. They're really quite dark. Okay, so let's come on to this last little bit of um, leg and we're almost there. So just like before I've put the base layer down I'm going to come around with the nugget come around it's got a white bit right on the back of his leg so let's just come around there And then come down again, just with a nice even layer. And I'm also going to come in with a bit of this warm grey on the bottom where his hoof is. I'm going to go into the uh, this little patch at the top with a bit of cold grey too. And just put a tiny bit of colour into there. I'm going to come around here now over the top of this nugget 
with this warm grey five. Now this actually, this area around here, there's not really much of a distinction between the, the one leg and the other leg. It really is uh, it's quite blurred there so I'm just going to bring that down there just like I'll bring that down there and I'm also just going to take my little a slice tool and I'm just going to add a little tiny bit of texture there which is just going to create a little bit of a distinction so I've just got that bit of distinction in there and then I'm going to come back down with this warm grey warm grey five I'm just going to bring this hoof down here a little bit. I'm just using the cold grey to extend this down because the way that I've just drawn that and left that light bit, I just need to bring that hoof down a little bit further to make that make sense. And then that's going to go dark on the back there. And there's a bit that's going to go dark there. I'm just going to bring a second layer down here. So I've left the white little bit down here, but I had I'd um, covered that up, which is why I've just put that back in the slice tool. But I've left a, a little bit of a distinction. Down the edge of that leg. And again, I'm not looking for any particular direction. I'm just getting a nice even coverage. I'm going to blend with this French grey again and come down the back of this leg blend this out I want to come in with this brown ochre 10% on this bottom bit, just like we've done on all the other uh, just like we've done on all the other hoof areas. Bring that in there. I'm going to come in with the Van Dyke brown down here just like we did on the other leg and just bring a bit of this brown 
into this grey. This light bit that we've put in down the back of the leg, that's a little bit too light at the minute. So what I want to do is go in with a cold grey too and just use little circular strokes to blend and diffuse this edge. I'm just going to blend that patch out a little bit as well. I'm going to come around the back of this leg with a bit of the walnut brown first and then I'm going to go back into a bit of the dark sepia again. A bit of that walnut brown into the bottom of this foot area. And then we'll come in with a bit of the dark sepia. It's going to darken this down at the top as well. Whilst I'm working down here, I'm going to go in with that brown ochre 50% to just put that slightly darker sandy colour in here. I'm going to finish it and just blend it with a bit of the cold grey 6 as well. Just blend this together a little bit more. And we're pretty much, pretty much there. What I'm going to do is to just take a really light little bit of the light ultramarine. And I mean a really light little dusting of this light ultramarine to just pull a little bit of colour off the bottom of his feet to just represent a little bit of snow but just a little dusting here and there so I don't want the pencil sharp but I have got I don't know if you can see that if I put it you can see I've got like um what I call a chisel tip 
So I've got a nice little chisel tip. And if you haven't got that, or if you want to make sure that you've um, got that chisel tip, just take a piece of paper and just scribble it, uh, scribble your pencil down on a piece of paper, and then you'll create that chisel tip. Hopefully you can see that. I'm trying to turn that around for the camera. Hopefully you can see that. And then that's the bit that you want to sort of use to create this suggestion of snow. It really is just a little bit of a, a suggestion, really, really light, nothing, nothing too much at all. Just to sort of fill in these little ruffles on the, on the hooves, because obviously we've got these, uh, these like darker bits and lighter bits on the hooves where it's sort of going into the snow. Just a tiny, tiny little bit. And I'm just using little circular motions. Just to add a little bit of colour at the side and underneath. That's pretty much all I'm going to do. I'm not going to do any more. I'm not going to take it out any further, I mean. Just put in a tiny little bit. What I am going to do to just blend this a little bit more, and I, I don't think I put a paper stump on the supply list. And if you don't have one and you don't want to do this, that's absolutely fine. But if you have one and it's clean, it will need to be clean. I'm just going to take a paper stump over this shadow to just push it around a little bit. Because I put the pencil on really lightly it's still sort of sitting towards the top of the tooth. It's not been pushed down into the tooth, which means that I can take a paper stump or any bit of paper that you just want to roll up. And I'm just going to blend that a little bit to so just soften it. Diffuse it and soften it. And I'm just bringing that paper stump just over the bottom of the hooves as well to just soften the edge of that hooves or soften those edges with the snow. But like I say, if you don't have it, it really doesn't matter. You can see there's not really much that's gone down there at all. And if you don't have the light torch marine, you could just use the sky blue or anything that you've got that you want to use that is sort of, you know, blue colored um, or you could obviously leave it. Gonna go in with a little bit of the cold grey five and just extend out a little bit of this tiny bit more sort of right where the the hooves go into the snow. Just extend that a little bit more. And if you didn't want to do this, you know, it's not gonna add that much. It's not it's not something you have to do if you don't want to put the shadow in. But I just thought a little shadow would look nice on mine here, just to just sort of put those hooves into the ground, really. That's all I'm doing, putting those hooves into the ground. And you can see that's all I'm doing, not a lot at all. And I'm just going to take that paper stump again, really lightly. And I would suggest, if you've not used this technique with the paper stump on the watercolour paper before, I would definitely suggest trying it on a piece of paper uh, before you actually use it on this project at the end now. Because if you, let me just see if I can grab a piece of paper. 
Okay, so this is just a, a scrap piece of paper. Let's do it on this side. If you were to uh, press too hard with your pencil, your paper stump is not really going to do anything. You're just going to be left with these harsh lines. So that's why it's worthwhile having a practice, keeping your pencil really, really light. You can hardly see anything go down. It's better to do this technique by, if you want to darken down the shadows, it's better to build layer after layer after layer of much lighter pencil. Because then what I can do is I can take the paper stump and I can blend that out. I don't know if you can see that, but that's um, that's blending out. So it's much better to build this up with very small layers at a time rather than going in with one heavy um, application of the blue and then trying to blend it out with the paper stamp. It just isn't going to work. Um, it, it really isn't going to work. Okay, so I think that's I think that's about it. As always, I'll obviously have a look over it once I turn the camera off. I might make some areas just slightly darker uh, if I feel it needs a little bit more contrast in places, but I won't do anything different in terms of techniques or use any different colors. I'll just go back over it if I do. I'm not sure, but I always do have a look at it. I put it up, have a look at it after a cup of tea or have a look at it the next day. And undoubtedly I'll see something that I didn't see whilst I was doing it. But otherwise, that's it. Really hope that you have enjoyed drawing this reindeer along with me and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks very much, bye for now.